Hi, I'm Danny with BuyRadarDetectors.com. I'm here with Bob, known online as the Veil Guy and uh, famous for his real wor world reviews. Um, in this video, I want to talk to Bob and get his thoughts on the Escort Max 360C versus the Escort Redline EX. Uh, this is a common question. Uh, which one should I buy? And mm -hmm. wh what are your thoughts on that, Bob? Right. Well, both of these detectors are the top of the line currently, windshield mounts coming from uh, Escort at the moment. I think the 360C is now retailing for $699, mm -hmm. and the Redline EX is retailing for $599. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so $100 more for right. the 360 This is sort of the flagship product from Escort I right think now, it's being positioned as a flagship product, uh -huh. right. Uh, you know, uh, we can talk a little bit about the Redline EX. The Red, and this is something a detector that Escort had once said they would never make. Uh, the, the, the Redline EX is based on the vaulted uh, M3 platform, which is a dual-horned front-facing antenna. Two uh, horns dedicated and tuned to the specific frequencies of KKA and X. And it's basically the only platform that does that. I think the M7, which is designed for their very expensive uh, Custom installs are uh, similar to the M3, but uh, anyway. So the, the result of that is excellent long-range front performance. Is that is that correct? Correct. Uh, and even rear detection. I mean, a, uh -huh. a radar detector doesn't have to have a rear-facing antenna like the Valentine or what we'll talk about is the 360C. Because of the signals the, bouncing and, and coming back. Correct. You get a substantial amount, especially with both of these sensitive detectors. Uh, the nice thing about the, the Redline EX, uh, unlike the previous detector, which was the Redline, is that it's got integrated GPS, right, uh, for photo enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, real-time speed, uh, sensitivity uh, to radar adjustments based on your speed, that kind of thing, which is nice, uh, as well as uh, a Bluetooth integration. So you can run Bluetooth to pair it to your smartphone, iPhone, Android. And use to, the Escort Live exactly. uh, app. Right, and then you can even make customizations and setting changes through the, uh, the app Escort Live. So that's a really nice feature. Uh, you know, this detector's been knocked a little bit online, uh, and I, I don't think it's justified, frankly. I've driven with this detector, and while the original Redline may get a little bit uh, better performance mm -hmm. in some cases. Uh, this detector also has, beyond these other features that we talked about, also has the ability to detect what's called MRCD and uh, GATSO, and they even call something called Striker or something like that, which is used in, I think, some of the Eastern uh, former uh, uh, Soviet type states or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has the ability, and that's special hardware, that's just not a software thing. So uh, it's got a lot of those capabilities, and that's good. Now, you're not seeing MRCD in, uh, in this country yet, but you do see it in parts of Canada, which is like a photo enforcement, very low power, very difficult to detect. And these signal. are capabilities that 360C does not have, is that correct? Right, yeah, right. So I think it's a good thing, plus it has a stealth capability, it's the, you know, one of the only detectors that is really undetectable. Mm -hmm. And that's important if you're in Virginia, of course, if you're a commercial truck driver where radar detectors are banned it's, you know, if you're a commercial driver, uh, not supposed to use them in military bases right. uh, where they use radar too. So uh, the red line, the M3 platform, and the M7 for the uh, custom installs are really the only truly undetectable platforms. Other detectors, a Redenso Uniden, good, low detectability, I mean, close, but they're not perfect. They truly are not. And there have been some claims that these Unidens, for example, are undetectable or the Redensos are undetectable. The reality is, they are detectable. And, uh, it, and the thing I'm concerned about is if you're on a two-way highway, two-lane road, secondary road, right. and the police officer passes you, you're going this way, he's got his unit, uh, the uh, Spectre, he would pick that up real blip. And it almost hurts you, I think, uh, versus being far away when you're just like, well, there's a lot of cars on the highway, which one is it? Where if you're passing a car... It would be clear that you're the, the that's one correct. with the detector. So again, is it a real problem? I don't know. I'd rather have a detector that doesn't have as much detectability than one that does uh, from a well, forward distance. On top of that, it sounds like there's a lot of advantages to the, the Redline EX. I, I think but, so. And it's more, I think it's a multicolor display, OLED display. Uh, it's, I just think it's more ergonomically designed. The, it just looks better packaged, now, I think. What kind of advantages do the 360C, uh, does the 360C offer? Right. Oh, one other thing about both of these uh -huh. is they have a magnetic quick release mount, which came out uh, with the Redline, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, Passport IX. 
where it's a sticky cup, you know, the bigger sticky cup. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a quick mount and dismount of the detector as opposed to the clip where you have to push and all that other stuff. So both of these detectors, including the IX, have that. And that's really a nice touch. Yeah, especially so, if you're moving it between vehicles and uh, you know, anything like that. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, the three sixty C is interesting in that it this is a follow up to the uh, Escort uh, Max three sixty, which is Escort's first dual facing you know one front facing one rear facing. Uh, now for all the years that people are bashing the Valentine, it's not needed. It's too much confusing. Blah blah blah. When the patent expires uh, some years ago, <laughs> you know Escort jumped on. With it. all due respect to Mike Valentine, you know he had a good idea. Uh, and Escort finally is, uh, and some of these other companies are actually. So the arrows the are helpful. You find the arrows to be yeah, very they, helpful. they can be helpful in this scenario. Uh, it's not really. I wouldn't think of it as a way of getting better detection from the back, because realistically, uh, targeting from the back often happens on an overpass mm -hmm. or on an on ramp, and you know it's going to be closer. Yeah. Uh, the the real value I believe to the antennas is that it tells you when you've passed the source. So, uh, you know, if let's just give you an example. When you're driving up on I-95 here in South Carolina, it's not uncommon to have the medium with trees. Mm -hmm. And if a cop is sitting on the other side targeting, and you're, you're approaching that, you're going to get the forward-facing antenna right. alert. Now, when you're passing that area, if he's on the other side, you don't see him. That arrow is going to transition to the rear, and you're going to know you've passed the uh, the source. It'll go from the front to the side to the rear. Uh, so, you know, it's a nice yeah. feature. Let me back up and explain that. Well, I don't think I did in the beginning. The, the Max 360C has a front and a rear facing antenna and directional arrows. So if, if it's detecting a signal from the front antenna, then you'll get an arrow ahead, correct? Yes. If it's the rear antenna, you'll get a, a rear facing arrow. So you know which direction you're, you're uh, being targeted from. Right, and you get a side, both sides, so you can see right. uh, that you're, you're likely passing the source. Uh, the, the thing about the 360C, which is important, uh, relative to the original Max uh, 360, mm -hmm. is the Max 360 was very slow to make that transition. It, it did, but uh -huh. it was very slow, and Escort did a great job with this. Now, the, another couple of nice things um, about the 360C is this is a properly sized detector. I think Escort, you know, with the 360, made it very large. It was a large detector, it was a heavy detector, rock solid on the windshield, but large. Uh, they've done a much better job at, at in incorporating all of that uh, technology into a smaller detector. So uh, that's good. The, the other notable thing about this uh, 360C is it's Wi-Fi enabled. So it's Bluetooth for pairing to your smartphone, controlling right. it, and it's also Wi-Fi enabled. This is the first detector ever to do that. Now, why would I need a Wi-Fi enabled radar detector? Right, okay. Uh, the reason is, and it really is more suited to vehicles, more vehicles are coming with a internet capability built in. Right. And a local Wi-Fi uh, hotspot, so to speak. So you can uh, tether or, or join the uh, your private network on your car, and then this, uh, instead of relying on your phone to do Escort Live, this can communicate over Wi-Fi. You can update firmware. You can update uh, your your uh, photo enforcement database, and you can integrate with Escort Live. It's so I don't cool. need to use my phone for Escort Live. If I turn on a hotspot on my smartphone, tether this detector to my smartphone, it has the Escort Live functionality built right in. Correct. Now, the the one thing I'm going to say that I, I don't like about the 360, and I think it's could be improved and designed, is that it's very difficult to, I say difficult, it's inconvenient to pair this detector directly to your, uh, uh, your phone, unfortunately. Uh, in, in some cases, I had to use two phones. I think the better thing to do is to be able to, like other devices that I use, to uh, communicate via Bluetooth, specify your hotspot, and sync. Uh, because the way it's working now, Escort Live needs to be on the same network. Is this, it's, it's just, just a little tricky. It's better suited to pair to an in-vehicle Wi-Fi. It's more difficult to pair directly to your phone, unfortunately. And I think they could do a better job at simplifying it. Uh, you know, the other thing I could argue is, is it so important to have it paired? I mean, it's, it's, a neat, it's a neat trick. Uh, but, 
also, you know, using Escort Live on your phone, you know, you could accomplish the same thing. So I, I frankly wouldn't recommend purchasing this detector in and of itself for the Wi-Fi capability. It's an interesting thing. It probably is going to be more important as we go forward. More cars are going to have the technology with building Wi-Fi. Fine. It's more practical. But I, I, I look at the advantage to the 360C. Is it a smaller packaged? It has what I think Escort's best filtering. This is an important thing for filtering out the K-band collision avoidance systems. So I think they do a much better job with this detector. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's got the magnetic mount. Uh, and that's, that's what I would, I would if, so it, the question really becomes ultra sensitivity, undetectability with photo enforcement, Bluetooth integration, or, you know, the arrows as a smaller version of the 360. But and you're maybe a, a quieter detector here, right? Maybe fewer false alerts with the 360C? Right. Uh, and one other thing, again, I'm not going to knock the product. I just want to set expectations properly, mm -hmm. is Escort has always tended to be aggressive on its filtering. And uh, with the K-band collision avoidance systems, it's not uncommon to, uh, if you come across, uh, a, 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 I'll give you an example, uh, uh, a low-powered K-band a speed sign. There are times that this, and especially if it's out of tune, you know, if it starts to drift because, you know, it's a battery operated, so it's not completely on the uh, frequency, this detector sometimes will look at filtering that. And when you, and then you get close enough and the signal breaks through. And then, you know, you don't have any warning and then all of a sudden you have a four bar warning. So, you know, you don't have the one, two, three gradual, you know. So it goes from nothing to the four, Full which blast, almost makes it feel like an instant on shot. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the other thing. And when, it's known about that signal the whole time. It's just been filtering it. Correct. Uh, the other thing, too, is this detector, uh, these, both of these, the way they filter is uh, the Acura, the Hondas, the Fiats, Stilt and Cadillacs, GM cars, you know, all those cars tend to still break through these uh, systems to some extent. Now the nice thing about this is it has band segmentation. Mm -hmm. It even has K-band segmentation where you can pick windows of, it's not really, it's still scanning the K-band range, but you can drop signals. So that's one thing, other thing I should mention. So this has got segmentation which improves performance uh, and you can drop certain uh, segments of K altogether. So in some cases you can, you can turn off the K-band filtering on this and just reduce the window of K-band that you get alerts. And that is not an option on a 360C. Uh, you, can do, uh, you can do some segmentation on that, but since this is based on what's called an M5 and M6 all digital platform, it's not for performance increasing. Hmm. It, it's, it's for basically filtering. So uh, that's basically uh, a look at these two. Look, they're both fantastic detectors. Uh, the 360 has been a fabulous seller for Escort, which is surprising to me because it was $649. Right. And I really thought we were punching the threshold of a $499 detector, but Escort has shown that there is a demand for that. So if you're going from $649 to $699, the $50 increment uh, for a smaller detector, better filtering, Wi-Fi potential integration to some of these more advanced cars, is it that much of a stretch? You know, so uh, hopefully that. Well, thank you, Bob. Context. Remember, if you're purchasing one of these detectors, be sure to pair it with laser veil stealth coating. With Veil applied to your vehicle, you're going to reduce the effective range of police laser guns and give you more time to react. To purchase Laser Veil or either one of these products, visit our website at buyradardetectors.com. Thanks again, Bob. Oh, it's always great seeing you.